Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston. Welcome to lecture 24 of Introductory Linear Algebra. In today's class, we're going to look at how do you actually compute the inverse of a matrix. Okay, in the previous class, we learned about inverses and we learned how to determine if a matrix actually has an inverse. But if it has an inverse, how do you actually find it? Well, that's what we're going to do now. Okay, and we're going to start off with the nice theorem that tells us how to do this. And this theorem, it's basically just a combination of the previous two theorems that we looked at. Okay, so one of the theorems that we looked at just uh, in the previous class was that a matrix is invertible if and only if its reduced row echelon form is the identity matrix. Okay, and then in the class before that, we looked at a theorem that said, hey, if you can row reduce this block matrix A identity to some other matrix, then it must be the case that this thing over here times A equals this thing over here. So if you just sort of stitch together those two results, what you get is that, hey, a matrix is invertible if and only if you're able to row reduce this block matrix, so you take the matrix you care about A, augment it on the right with an identity matrix. If you're able to row reduce that down to identity augmented with something else, then your matrix is invertible because that means the reduced row echelon form of A is I. Okay, and furthermore, it means that whatever's on the right hand side here, that must be the inverse. Because again, what that means is that this times this equals the identity matrix, okay? There's a little bit of a fudge going on there because remember inverses, they have to work on both sides, right? You have to have A inverse times A equals identity and A times A inverse equals the identity, okay? But that's sort of a minor technicality that we're gonna address a little bit later on in, in next class actually. Okay, but so, so what happens is, yeah, so here's how it works. If you wanna find the inverse of a matrix, augment that matrix with the identity matrix row reduce it as much as possible. Try to get down to an identity matrix on the left-hand side. If you're able to get an identity matrix on the left-hand side, then whatever's on the right-hand side, that's gotta be your inverse. If you're not able to row reduce down to an identity matrix on the left-hand side, that means there is no inverse, okay? The matrix is not invertible, so just ignore the junk on the right-hand side in that case. It's just gibberish, it's not useful for us. All right, well, let's go through a couple examples of finding matrix inverses now that we know actually how to do it, okay? And the step of showing that a matrix is invertible and finding it, it's all combined into one step now, okay? You always do the same thing to answer these questions. Just augment on the right-hand side by an identity matrix of the appropriate size so that the augmentation actually makes sense. And then row reduce, row reduce, row reduce, okay? So I take this matrix here. I wanna turn this three into a zero. So I need to do an addition row operation. And again, I'm gonna go through these row operations really quickly because we already know how to solve linear systems. We've already seen how to do gauss jordan elimination. So just, I mean, follow along with maybe what steps I'm doing, but don't worry about the nitty gritty technical details of what's happening to every single number in these matrices. Just trust that I'm doing the row operations properly. Okay, so I wanna turn the three into a zero. So that's why I do this row operation to get a zero there. Next up, I wanna turn this minus two into a one. So I just multiply that whole row through by minus a half. And then last but not least, I wanna turn this two into a zero. So again, addition row operation to you know add some multiple of the bottom row to the top row to turn the two into a zero. And now look at what I've got. I've got identity on the matrix, identity matrix on the left. Great, I love that. That means my matrix A is invertible. And whatever's on the right, that must be the inverse of this matrix A that I started with. So you know what, this is our first time finding the inverse of a matrix. So let's actually verify that it really is the inverse. Let's multiply them together and see that we get the identity matrix, just sort of as a sanity check here. Okay, so the conclusion that we make based on that computation is just that, yeah, A is invertible and A inverse is whatever's in that right two by two block. If you just scroll back up here, hey, this matrix here, that's the invertible matrix. That's the inverse matrix. I just copied it down. But now let's, let's do our sanity check. Let's sort of verify our work here. Okay, let's make sure that we haven't made any calculation mistakes. Okay, so let's compute A times A inverse. And hey, that's this product. I just copied down A and I copied down A inverse. And I do that matrix multiplication, and wouldn't you know it, yes, I get the identity matrix, okay? Because I didn't make any mistakes anywhere, okay? If you want to do even more sanity checking, you know that A inverse times A should also be the identity matrix. So you can multiply them together in the opposite order, and you'd better get the identity matrix as well. Okay, but all of this down here, this is just sort of extra checking our work. Like, this isn't necessary, okay? If you want to find the inverse, you're just done after this step. All this stuff at the bottom is just, you know, I'm sort of making sure that I didn't screw up anywhere. Alrighty, let's do another example, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna solve a linear system via the inverse of a matrix, okay? So let's solve the linear system x plus 2y equals 3 and 3x plus 4y equals 5, okay? So this is a linear system. Of course, you could solve it directly, okay? We learned last week how to solve linear systems. That method works fine. 
but just for the sake of mixing it up, let's solve it a different way, okay? I'm gonna write down this linear system in matrix notation. Remember, you can always do this for any linear system, okay? You stick the coefficients on the left into a matrix, so this becomes a matrix one, two, three, four, because those are the coefficients of x and y, and then you stick your variables x and y into a column vector, and the right-hand side, three, five, into a column vector on the right-hand side. Okay, so that's the matrix form of that linear system. Okay, well, something sort of neat happens here. This matrix, that's the matrix that we worked with in the previous example, right? And we just showed that it's in invertible and we also found its inverse. Okay, so if we call this matrix over here on the left A, then hey, we know what the inverse of A is. A inverse is this guy here. And if we run through an argument like what we did last class when we talked about how invertibility relates to linear systems, remember what happens is if you have AX equals B, then well, when you multiply on the left by A inverse, then you see that X equals A inverse times B. Okay, you can just sort of move the A over to the other side as long as you actually move its inverse over on the other side. Okay, so AX equals B implies X equals A inverse times B. Okay, so you can find the solution to the linear system directly just by multiplying by this inverse that we already found. Okay, so what is A inverse? Well, I'm just copying it down. We found that in the previous example. And then what is B? Well, I'm just copying it down from up here. And then you just do your matrix multiplication and you find that, hey, that equals minus one, two. And that is the unique solution of the linear system. That's your conclusion there. Okay, because the coefficient matrix A is invertible, you know you've got a unique solution, and this is how you find it. That's your explicit formula for finding the unique solution. In other words, X equals minus one, Y equals two. That's the only solution of that linear system. And you can find it by multiplying it by the inverse. Okay, you can find it directly using Gaussian elimination too, though, of course, if you prefer that method. Okay, let's go through another example. Let's go through a three by three example. Let's use this three by three matrix, try to determine if it has an inverse, and if it does have an inverse, find that inverse. Okay, so same thing we always do. To find the inverse, put that matrix on the left of a block matrix, identity matrix of the same size on the right of that block matrix, and then row reduce, row reduce, row reduce. Try to get an identity on the left. Okay, so here it is, this is A, this is like my starting matrix on the left here, augmented with identity matrix, and now I want to row reduce down to an identity on the left. Okay, so I want to get these two entries here to be zero to start. Okay, so that's why I'm doing these two row operations. Row two minus two row one gets me a zero in the, the two one entry. And then the row three minus row one row operation gets me a zero in the three one entry. Okay, and then all the other junk in those rows changes as well. Okay, next up, again, I want to get more like an identity matrix. So I want to get a one in the middle here instead of a minus two. And there are a couple ways that I could do this. I could do minus a half times the second row. Or maybe an easier way here, though, is I'm just going to swap row two and row three because there's already a one here. I just want to sort of shift it up there. So that's a fine thing to do as well. So that's what I do. I just swap rows two and row three uh, because that gets me a one here in the middle. Okay, now I want to get a zero up top and a zero down below. So again, that's just some addition row operations. I'm going to do row one minus some multiple of row two and row three plus some multiple of row two. And that gets me zeros in those two entries. All right, so now the first two columns on the left are good. I have two more, I have one more column to go, okay? So now I wanna get a one here and zeros above it. So I do some row operations to that effect, starting off with getting a one down there at the bottom, turning this two into a one. You can just do that by multiplying the bottom row by a half. Okay, and then two more addition row operations will get rid of the minus two and three above that one. And then I'll finally be done. Okay, after those two row operations, I'm done. Okay, so I've got an identity matrix on the left now, and that's great. If I'm able to get an identity matrix on the left by doing elementary row operations, that means my matrix is invertible. Okay, so now I know my matrix is invertible, and oh, boom, whatever's on the right-hand side there, that's my inverse. Okay, so then I'm done. That's my conclusion. Great. Yes, the matrix is invertible, and there's its inverse. Okay, I just copy and paste it. Copy down this thing on the right into the matrix. That's your inverse. Cool beans. Let's do another example. Let's find the inverse, if it exists, of some other matrix, okay? So again, a three by three matrix, just so that it's maybe, you know, not so trivial that we can eyeball it, okay? But setup is the same. Three by three matrix on the left, three by three identity on the right, okay? It's always identity of the same size as the original matrix on the right. Okay, so I just copied my matrix into the left here, identity on the right, and we want to determine if this matrix is invertible, and if it is, we want to find what that inverse is. Okay, so same thing as always, row reduce, row reduce, row reduce, try to get identity on the left. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple row operations to get zeros in this left column here. 
Okay, and it's just a couple of addition row operations. I mean, if you wanted to, you could get a one up top here first. I mean, that's a fine thing fine thing to do. Like there are lots of different ways that you can row reduce down to the identity matrix. Here I'm skipping over that step just because these bottom two entries, they're already multiples of two. So I'm just sort of avoiding some fractions as long as I can. All right, so I do those addition row operations to get zeros down there. Uh, let's see, and then again, there are a couple of different ways that you could go, but now, next up, I'm gonna try to get a zero down here. Again, I'm trying to get more like the identity matrix, okay? I could get a one up here if I wanted to. I could get a zero up here as well if I wanted to, okay? So lots of ways I could go. I'm gonna get a zero down here is the next thing I'm gonna do, okay? So I'm gonna do row three minus three row two, because then it's gonna be three minus three is zero down here. Great, okay, and when I do that, I'm left with this matrix over here on the left-hand side. Okay, now if you really wanted to, you could try to go a little bit farther and get closer and closer and closer to an identity matrix, but you're not going to be able to get an identity matrix. No matter how hard you try, you're never going to get an identity matrix on the left here. And the reason for that is you're not going to be able to get a one down here, right? No matter what you do, you're not going to be able to get a third leading entry. Okay, my reduced row echelon form is not going to be the identity matrix. It's going to be something that has a one here and a one here and then a zero row tucked away at the bottom. Okay, so if you ever, ever, ever get a zero row on the left hand side when you're doing this row reduction, remember that means your reduced row echelon form is not the identity matrix, it's something else. Okay, so your matrix is not invertible. Okay, so you just stop at this point. Okay, you don't have to reduce it all the way to the reduced row echelon form. As soon as you get a zero row, you know, oh, reduced row echelon form is not a daddy, so I'm done. My original matrix was not invertible. That's your conclusion as soon as you see a zero row on the left. The matrix you started with was not invertible. Okay, so then you're just done. Okay, nothing more to do. Don't find me. You don't have to find what the, you know, resulting matrix is over there if you go all the way to reduce row echelon form just because, you know, we're looking for the inverse, but the inverse doesn't exist. Alrighty, so that, that's enough for today. Uh, what we're going to do next class is just we're going to introduce a couple of final theorems about invertibility of matrices, um, just to pin down some sort of technical details that we've glossed over. And we're going to come up with an explicit formula for the inverse of a two by two matrix as well, so that you don't have to do this Gaussian elimination method for the two by two case, at least. Alright, so I'll see you next class for that.